You may have touched on this earlier, but I was hoping we could just go over again the modes of documentary film. Okay, so, well, these are not my modes. These are Bill Nichols' modes. Uh, so there is expository, um, the observational mode, um, which is sort of completely, quote-unquote, objective, where you stand back and you don't interfere. There's a participatory mode, which is the mode where the filmmakers interact. So someone like Michael Moore would be uh, making sort of participatory documentaries. There's self-reflexive mode, which is um, films that are essentially about their own making. So there's a very famous um, Soviet film from like 1920 called The Man with the Movie Camera. It's like 1920, something like that. In The Man with the Movie Camera, you watch the cameraman shoot the film that you're watching, you watch the editor edit the film that you're watching, you watch an audience watch the film that you're watching. It's a film that's um, sort of only, um, the only truth it can offer is that, well, it knows it's a movie. So here's, this is the truth that I'm giving you. Um, it's very self-reflexive. Uh, there's poetic, there's a poetic mode, so that's like the uh, Godfrey Reggio films, the uh, Koyana Scotsi, those films. Um, they're very lyrical. Am I forgetting something? I feel like I'm forgetting something. I think five. Observational, participatory, self-reflexive, uh, poetic. Then there's um, the performative, which is the grizzly man and, and um, thin blue line sort of, um, and something like stories we tell, and then expository. So six, I think. That's right. So then Cinema Verite... Cinema Verite would be like participatory. Participatory, okay. Yeah, yeah cause it's cinema, there's a difference, I'm gonna get very pedantic, <laughs> but there's a difference between Cinema Verite and direct cinema. Direct cinema is purely observational, it's Frederick Weissman, it's no interaction whatsoever. Um, in Cinema Verite, there's lots of handheld camera and they're out on the street, but there will be interaction. It will be something like American Movie or the films or Roger and Me, the Michael Moore film. So you brought up uh, Werner Herzog and Errol Morris, and so I'm thinking of like the Thin Blue Line mm -hmm. or Into the Abyss, where you have multiple points of view. Mm -hmm. And I think I got this from something you said, truth doesn't exist, it's only perception, <laughs> yeah. which is excellent. Yeah. I like that. Make a t-shirt out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially in this day and age of yeah. Twitter and all that. So talk about uh, documentary filmmaking and perception. So really, is it just perception we're going after? Because since truth is, ah. so there's so many truths. Everyone's reality is different. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know if we're going after anything. I mean, I, I, I think that filmmakers who are more attuned to that idea um, will probably make more interesting work. Um, oh boy, I don't. <laughs> I'm an opinionated guy, so I'm trying not to. Um, I, I like. There's just. I'm trying to say something about this filmmaker is not very good, but this filmmaker is. Oh, I okay. um, I, I, there's, there's, there's just, there's something about understanding that um, trying to present something as an absolute, um, perhaps, yeah, maybe it's this day and age, or, but perhaps is not the best way to sort of get at any kind of truth if you're trying to present sort of an absolute thing um, because it's maybe an argument it's not even an argument um, and I don't know maybe, maybe we're just beyond that uh, as a culture I don't know if we need it um, there's an argument to be made that we absolutely need it when when you have um, someone in the most powerful position in the world who just is gaslighting um, constantly and everyone around him is gaslighting constantly. And so we need some sort of standard of truth, right? Um, but within a, if we're thinking about it in terms of a film, I, I don't know, it, sometimes it feels like it's, it's lacking um, because it's so absolute. I'm trying to think of an example where I, where it shows how problematic it is and right now and but I don't want to right I, well if you think about let's say into the abyss Herzog is showing multiple points of view mm -hmm. of what happened that night mm -hmm. you know or thin blue line same thing what happened mm -hmm. that night everybody had their own mm -hmm. 
thing, even west of Memphis, mm -hmm. you know, different different things. And so to me, that's terribly interesting because everybody was showing a different version of their own reality, yeah. hopefully. What's interesting, I guess, about it too is that, so, especially someone like Errol Morris, is he is, but I, he's figured out, he's, you know, the, the whole point of the same blue line um, is he's figured out the truth, right? He's letting us know that like, okay, we're getting these different perspectives uh, and I'm gonna show you sort of um, these reenactments where we get those different perspectives sort of played out. But then he leaves us with that audio tape of um, whatever the guy's name, essentially confessing to the crime, right? Um, and so there's a kind of ultimate authority that he's taken up with that, where oh, like I found the truth, like I was showing you all of these variations of the truth, but here's what really happened, and this guy just admitted to it. Um, so there's a kind of um, authority or power that he's taking as the ultimate truth teller, which is kind of interesting. Um, and part of it coming from, I think, his background as a as a uh, private investigator. Uh, his, you know, you could think of that movie as an investigation. Um, the way he's reenacting, he's doing these reenactments so he can see if that sort of holds true in his investigation. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, and I think about stories we tell, and and she's she's not coming to any conclusions. She's trying to figure out what this family history is, and. Um, but she's not, you know, there's a whole challenge that happens. Have you seen that film? I haven't. It sounds good. I want There's a whole challenge that happens with her and somebody else involved in her, with her family and where he questions why she has the right to tell this story or this part of the story. He has the right, he should be telling that part of the story. And it's a really fascinating thing because kind of like what we were just talking about uh, earlier when I was talking about bias, there is something about when you pick up the camera and say, I have the right to do this, um, there might be a whole bunch of other people who stand up and say, no, you don't, you don't have the right to do this. Um, so I don't know, hey, I don't know if, if it's a, what somebody should or should not do. Because I'm sure I can think of, a, you know, March of the Penguins, that's a fun film, that's completely expository, you know, there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. Um, so there, it's not that there's no value in that sort of stuff. I just always find the other films more interesting, I guess.